Hello students, welcome to EPG Patshala. I am Dr. Renu Tyagi from Sadar Patel Institute, Ahmedabad. Today we will study the module Physical Fitness and Health under the paper Physiology and Sports Anthropology. So student, let us see what we are going to learn from this particular module. By understanding the concept of physical fitness, we will understand the necessity of physical fitness in our everyday life. The module will describe the importance of physical fitness to lead a healthy life. And we will come to know about the different components of the physical fitness and the health related aspects of those components. We will also understand that how and to what extent or what benefits we are going to get from the physical fitness. In the end, we will recommend some exercise training programs to improve the physical fitness. Now let us understand the concept of fitness. What a fitness mean to an individual? Fitness is the state that characterizes the degree to which a person is able to function efficiently. It is the physical, mental, emotional, social, moral and spiritual ability of a person that permits him or her to live the life most effectively and efficiently, capitalizing his full potential. Fitness has become an integral part of the lives of all the people as it has been indispensable for the survival. Physical fitness activities, teamwork should be more structured to keep the pace with the complexities of the civilization. Organizations of the physical activities become inevitable nowadays. The historians have described the lack of exercises as one of the very important factor of the fall of civilization and the nation due to the growing or increasing health issues or health problems. Thus, physical fitness is a highly complex phenomena which need to be studied in greater details. Now let us see the broader components of the fitness. Broadly the fitness can be classified in two categories, the physical fitness and the mental fitness. The physical fitness can be further categorized as the health related fitness and the motor fitness. Now let us see what do we understand by the concept of physical fitness. Physical fitness is the ability to carry out our daily task with vigor and alertness without undue fatigue and with proper energy or ample energy to enjoy the leisure time pursuits, relaxation time activities and to meet our unforeseen emergencies. Physical fitness and health have a symbiotic relationship with each other. The health benefits of the physical fitness are widely recognized nowadays and physical activities have a key role to play in the maintenance of a good health as well as in the prevention of the diseases. Indirectly this uplift our quality of life and hence improves the health. Let us see the physical fitness of an individual which can be described by the various parameters. The important parameters are the health, body mechanics, resistance to disease, muscular endurance, etc. How does health influence the physical fitness of an individual? The normal physiological functions of the body is defined as the health. When an individual is leading healthy life with normal internal functions of the parts of the body, he or she will be able to perform all the human activities without any difficulty and thus can be recognized as physically fit. Body mechanics, the efficient performance of physical activities ranging from the common daily task to the most complex skills. Resistance to the disease, the ability of an individual to fight with the infectious disease is called as the resistance to the disease. Physical fitness is assessed by the immunity level of the individual to keep its diseases fighting capacity alert. 
individual susceptibility to produce the antibodies to combat with the disease now what is muscular endurance the ability to repeat the physical activities involving the resistance is the muscular endurance muscular contraction requires energy the only immediate source of this energy is adenosine triphosphate atps aerobic breakdown of glucose results in 19 times more atps production per glucose molecule than anaerobic glycolysis therefore physical fitness is assessed by the individual's ability to combat the atp need during strong muscular contractions what is cardio respiratory endurance it's an ability of the circulatory and the respiratory system to support the activities which required sustained efforts such as distance running or swimming or during tenacious exercise the perfect body contour the physical fitness is well assessed with the body tone that is well maintained muscular and body weight as per an individual's gender and age we generally judge in person's well being at first look by the outer physical features and the body shape now what's psychological fitness psychological fitness is a very important parameter to determine the physical fitness state of an individual the emotional stability is necessary to meet the everyday problem of life and thereby activities human being make themselves emotionally attached with their surroundings and any disturbance to their physical environment cause them to be emotionally deprived which has a negative impact on their health and thus reducing their fitness level which is assessed by their inability to handle a sudden emotional trauma social consciousness physical fitness is assessed with the adaptability with respect to the requirement of group living and attitudes values and skills that stimulates satisfactory participation in a full range of daily activities individual participation in social norms can elicit an proud identity in social living which will psychologically enhance the performance of activities to achieve status and role in community and thus indirectly associated with the physical fitness spiritual and moral qualities individuals with moral qualities uplift the well-being of society as a whole it enhances the power to contribute to the fullest measure of living by performing livelihood activities in a society now let's see the health related fitness physical fitness is subdivided into health related fitness and motor fitness the essential component of health related fitness are the strength cardio respiratory endurance and the flexibility the strength can be the static strength it can be explosive strength or it can be the functional strength similarly cardio respiratory endurance and flexibility also determines our physical fitness in aspect of our health parameters now let's talk about the strength in detail the strength is associated or it can be assessed by the muscular endurance strength can be defined as the maximum effort or force that can be exerted against a resistance functional strength or the muscular endurance is an ability of the muscles to apply force repeatedly or to sustain contraction for a period of time or it can be defined as an ability to perform work continuously involving local muscular efforts our strength peaks around 25 years of age plateaus through 35 to 40 years of age and then shows an accelerating decline with 25% of loss of peak force by the age of 65 years it is measured by determining the maximum force that a muscle or muscle group can exert once and once only the strength can be developed by either isometric or isotonic contraction 
of muscles or by the combination of both now let's see what's an isometric contraction is an isometric contraction occurs when the ends of the muscles do not move during contractions although muscle contracts but the length of the muscle remains the same and no external work is being done isometric means the same measure or length this form of muscle work is carried by the grip strength the another type of contraction is isotonic contraction an isotonic contraction occurs when a muscle shortens without a change in its tension that is the length of the muscle changes while tension remains constant therefore an external work is being done this form of muscle work is carried out when the legs are moved in walking and running or while lifting a load now let's see what is static strength static strength is the one which is without any change in the muscle's length and also without any movement of the objects our hand grip strength of the right and left hand measured using the grip dynamometer can be measure of static strength this strength can be measured while the subject should be strongly encouraged to give the maximum efforts the dynamometer that is an instrument to measure the grip strength should be calibrated regularly to ensure the better results it is useful to assess whether the athlete was right or left handed people with the strong hand try to be strong healthy and physically fit the right hand grip strength is the one which is measured with the right hand and the left hand grip strength is the one which is measured by using the left hand now let's see what is explosive strength explosive strength can be defined as an ability to keep the muscles fibers contraction for an extended period of time it can be best assessed by the standing broad jump the standing broad jump is an activity where the person is standing with the feet approximately 10 cm apart and the toes just behind the take off line the subject to do this is asked to jump vertically forward with the arms swinging backwards and the knees bent the jump can be accomplished by simultaneously extending the knees and swinging the arms forward the next is to be discussed is functional strength the functional strength includes the pull up exercise only for the boys flexed arm hang only for the girls and sit ups the pull ups that is for boys only in pull up a metal bar with 2 cm in radius is fixed high enough on which subject could hang with the legs fully extended and feet off the floor the subject is asked to raise his body by his arms until chin the chin is above the bar and then lower the body to a full hang and return to the starting position this cycle is repeated as many times as possible and the number of completed pull up events can be recorded as the score of the functional strength of the subject the flexed arm hang is meant for the girls only for girls the flexed arm hang is employed it uses a horizontal wooden bar almost equal to the subject's standing height the subject is instructed to hand on the bar but with the elbow flexed and then raise her body off the floor and chin above the bar and the chest close to the bar the subject is asked to hold this position as long as possible length of the time the subject could hold the flexed arm position is recorded to the nearest second thus the longest time witnesses 
the maximum strength and does the physical fitness level of the girl now let's talk about the sit ups how they can help us to decide the physical fitness of an individual in sit up kind of exercise the subject is asked to lie on his back with the knees bent feet on the floor and heels about 25 to 30 cm away from the buttocks the leg should bent in such a way to form less than 90 degrees to the knee then the subject is asked to put his or her hand behind the head with fingers clasped and elbows squarely on the floor the feet should be on touch with the floor during the test then the subject is asked to curled up bringing the elbow forward finally touching to the knees and then backwards to the starting position this is one sit up cycle the cycle of sit up repeated and the number of correctly operated sit ups is recorded as the score of strength within the 30 seconds now let's understand what is the cardio respiratory endurance the cardio respiratory endurance is referred as the ability of our cardiovascular and respiratory system to carry out the exercise continuously for an extended period of time it can also be defined as an ability of our heart lung blood vessels to deliver oxygen to the working muscles and tissues during a physical activity for a prolonged period of time as well as the ability of those muscles and tissues to utilize that oxygen the cardiovascular endurance can be measured using a number of formal clinical methods for example the vo2 max test the ventilatory threshold test or the lactate threshold test it can be measured by the graded exercise test exercise electrocardiography non clinical test for the cardiovascular endurance includes the resting heart rate test rhr and then there is a cooper test rate at which the uh, restores the resting heart rate or it can be a post cardiovascular exercise test as a person improves their cardiovascular and respiratory endurance a number of beneficial adaptations takes place in our body which include the increased heart rate increased blood plasma volume there is a decrease in our heart rate there is a increased heart stroke volume with our improved cardiorespiratory endurance it also improves our cardiac output besides it improves the oxygen extraction of our body cells it makes our blood flow improved and the distribution of the blood flow to the different body parts and the tissues it lowers our blood pressure it makes our pulmonary functions and ventilation more efficient the cardio respiratory endurance is assessed by the following exercise training plans number 1 600 yard run walk and number 2 a harvard step test what is 600 yard run walk and how it's going to decides the physical fitness or the cardio respiratory endurance of an individual in this the subject is asked to run with a signal along a track well marked to cover a distance of 600 yards within the rounds in a square field the subjects are allowed to intersperse the run with walking to avoid over exhaustion subjects are instructed that the primary objective is to cover the distance in the minimum time the time to complete the distance is recorded in minutes and seconds poor performance is indicated by longer time duration to complete the distance and thus comparatively less fit the another test to assess the cardiorespiratory endurance 
is the Harvard step test. In this test, a bench with 20 inches high for boys and 17 inches high for girls is used and the subjects are asked to step up and down the bench for 5 minutes. This test should be performed with a lag of at least half an hour before or after a heavy meal. Then the subject is allowed to relax for one minute and then we take a pulse count. And a rapid fitness index is calculated to assess the physical fitness level of an individual by studying the fitness score. Let's see what flexibility is. The elasticity of tendons, ligaments and joint capsules is decreased as cross linkages develop between adjacent fibrils of collagen fibers. Over the span of working life, adult loss some 8 to 10 cm of lower back and hip flexibility as measured by sit and reach test. The restriction is the range of movement at the major joints which will become yet more pronounced during retirement and eventually independence become threatened because the subject cannot climb into a car or a normal bath, ascend a small step or complete the movement required for dressing and combing the hair. The flexibility is thought to be conserved or improved by gently taking the main joints through their full range of motion every day. For instance, the sit and reach, let's see what it is about. In this sit and reach exercise, the subject is allowed to sit comfortably along a vertical wall with the knees extended in front as shown in the figure. Then the subject is asked to touch his extended feet. The horizontal distance between the vertical support and the point of maximum arm reach is recorded as a measure of his or her flexibility. Higher is the distance a person is more flexible to carry out difficult movement and hence more physically fit. Now let's see what is motor fitness. It is another component of the physical fitness and is an essential component of the physical fitness which is further determined by the agility, speed and balance. What is agility? Agility is assessed by the shuttle run and the plate tapping. Now let's see what is shuttle run. In this kind of exercise, two parallel lines are marked on the floor which are 30 feet apart. Two blocks of the wood are placed behind one of the line and the subject is standing behind the other line. On providing the signal, the subject is asked to run to the blocks, pick it up and run towards the starting line and place the block behind the line, then proceed to pick up the second block and place it in the same manner across the starting line. The total time taken to complete the procedure is noted in seconds which can determine the agility of an individual. Another way of measuring the agility is the plate tapping. In plate tapping, the subject is asked to touch two plates of 20 cm in diameter placed 60 cm apart alternately and very quickly as possible for 20 seconds. The total number of taps in 20 seconds is recorded as a measure of his or her agility. Now let's see how we can measure the speed. The ways to measure the speed of an individual or the test to measure the speed can be a 50 yard run or it can be a soft ball throw. Let's how this 50 yard run can be Conducted. In this, the subject is asked to run along 50 yard distance. The time taken to complete the total distance is recorded in seconds using a stopwatch. The speed in meter per second of the run was calculated 
by dividing the distance with the time taken to cover the distance. Another way of measuring the speed is the soft wall throw. In soft wall throw, the subject is asked to throw overhand a standard soft ball having 12 inch circumference from behind the takeoff line as far as possible. The throw is measured from the takeoff line to the point of landing. A farthest score is measured to the nearest centimeter to assess the physical fitness or speed in the physical fitness of an individual. Now let's see what test can be conduct to assess the balance of an individual. The test is balance flamingo stand. Now let's see how it can be done. In this test, the subject is asked to balance on a beam for one minute with the preferred feet on the longitudinal axis of the beam and the other leg bent backwards and held by the hand at the foot level as shown in this picture. The score is obtained by dividing the 60 with the number of times the subject stepped out from the flamingo stand in one minute. Let's understand what is the mental fitness for an individual. Mental fitness is very important for the maintenance of the psychological health and social effectiveness of an individual. It involves the ability to balance the feelings, desires, ambitions and the ideas and to face the challenges and accept the realities of the life and perform the desired activities. In contrast, the mental fitness prevents the adjustment with the society and thus hampering the physical well-being. Mental illness is characterized by the some of the following symptoms that is depression, insomnia or lack of sleep or excessive sleeping. It's also characterized by compulsive actions, feeling of hopelessness, the serious thought of committing suicide and unreasonable phobias. Partial or complete loss of memory, the self-destructive behaviors like excessive gambling, drinking, drug abuse, overeating and extreme dieting. It may also lead to the delusions or the false beliefs and hallucinations sometimes and it also affects the sociability and our functionings. Let's study the benefits of physical fitness. The exercise begins by working with the body on a structural level. The exercise practices then stimulates and balance all the system of the body. The end result is increased mental clarity, emotional stability and many more health benefits. Now let's have a look at the physiological benefits of the physical fitness. The benefits on our nervous system can be studied as follows. The exercise brings about stable autonomic nervous system equilibrium with a tendency towards parasympathetic nervous system dominance, which results in the decrease in heart rate and blood pressure, improves our gastrointestinal and excretory functions, it improves the sexual activities, it declines the oxygen consumption during an activity. It favors the storage of absorbed nutrients. It helps in the improvement of higher intellectual activities like motivation, behavioral personality, memory efficiency, learning, moral and social senses, etc. It helps in improvement of cerebral blood flow. The depth perception and the critical fusion frequency improves which indicates reduced fatigue and reduced stress level. 
Now let's have a look on other benefits of the physical fitness on other systems of our body. The first is the benefit on our cardiovascular system. Our heart rate and systemic blood pressure decreases. Our cardiovascular efficiency increases. That is at a given level of exercise, there is a smaller increase in the above parameters. The benefits on our respiratory system are there is a decline in the respiratory rate. The tidal volume increases. It improves our vital capacity. The breath holding time increases. Our maximum breathing capacity improves. It improves the respiratory efficiency and respiration becomes more smooth. How it benefits our metabolic rate? The metabolism which is a good indicator of the rate at which we live, there is no fall in the internal body temperature. Higher maximum oxygen consumption can be achieved due to increase in cardiorespiratory efficiency. How it benefits our neurohormonal activities? It results in a decrease in fasting blood glucose level. It improves the thyroxine level. The oxytocin increases and prolactin increases. Our physical fitness also influences our skeletal muscular system. The musculoskeletal flexibility and joint range of movement increase. Our strength and resilience increases. It improves our endurance and our energy level is also improved. It benefits our digestive system as well. The proper digestion requires a proper diet as well as the proper exercise and posture. So, with all these things, our blood flow is improved to the gastrointestinal tract. It stimulates the peristaltic movements. It relaxes our digestive system and leads to an efficient or effective elimination of the waste from our body. Let's see the psychological and biochemical benefits of being physically fit. The psychological benefits can be named as there is an improvement in the somatic and the kinesthetic awareness level. Our mood improves and there is a subjective well-being. Our social adjustment improves. The anxiousness and depression declines. Unfriendliness or hostility declines. The psychomotor function improves such as the grip strength increase. Fine skill movement improves and integrated function of the body parts improved and endurance also increases. Some of the biochemical benefits which improves indicating an anti-stress and antioxidant effect are important in the prevention of degenerative diseases like the hematocrit hemoglobin and lymphocyte count increases. TLC declines. The total serum protein and vitamin C increases. Our glucose and sodium level declines. Total cholesterol declines as well as there is a decline in the triglycerides level. Some of the other benefits of being physically fit are like we have the sufficient energy level, we have the ability to do work and to recover faster and we have the freedom from illness or diseases. And there is a pleasure of life and personality development. Physically active person has adequate energy for accompanying his task. An increase in energy availability is brought about for an increase in the efficiency of the body with regard to the use of oxygen. Our body is able to use more oxygen and make oxygen available to the working muscles. In this way, available energy is increased. A regular physical fitness program proves very beneficial for those who exhaust easily. With a gradual increase in the level of physical fitness using the exercises, one is able not only to perform more work but also can recover from the fatigue much faster. A gradual and progressive exercise program can produce a general resistance to certain common health issues or illnesses, the training program make an individual physically fit. The overall personality development of an individual occurs with healthy and physically fit status of the body. 
let's have an overall look on the factors affecting the physical fitness a number of factors such as the biological motor environmental behavioral cultural factors influence our state of physical fitness the age sex body size body composition genetics can adversely impact the physical fitness such as aging leads to progressive decline of muscular strength flexibility and cardiorespiratory endurance some of the environmental factors like micro environment macro environment health and nutrition can also influence the physical fitness of an individual and the cultural factors like educational level familial details urbanization level and occupation are known to affect the physical fitness of an individual so students let's summarize what we have learned in this module so far now we have understood the concept of physical fitness the various component of physical fitness and the ways to keep ourselves physically fit the physical fitness uh, is understood to us as a way to prevent the ill health and get rid of the diseases especially it's better for the senior citizens by following a physically fit life the aging becomes healthy because of keeping ourselves physically fit with physical fitness individuals can survive independently in their old age without any health issues or without the assistance of any individual basically health is a state of mind and it's a state of complete physical mental and social well being and physical activities appears to provide the most diverse health benefit there are positive relationships between the physical activities and the factors such as the functional capacity of our body motor abilities psychological health cognitive functionings and thus the well being the health related components focus on the factors that promote optimum health and prevent the onset of various kind of diseases and the problems associated with the inactivity exercise training Uh, cannot restore the tissues that has already been destroyed but it can protect the individual against a number of chronic or severe diseases so there is a need to promote physical activities for every individual that is a way to prevent the ill health and to reduce an economical blow and on the health budget and as well as the physical fitness is going to be a very important or very important concept to lead a healthy life in the coming future thank you